Hello everyone! I've just finished creating an exterior set for the 1.8 scale DeLorean model and today I would like to share a few thoughts on this new set with you. First of all, the set will be available in two different variants. The first variant is one with printed screws. That means that you will have the 3D parts, you can paint them and install them and that will be it. There will also be a second variant which is one without screws and with that version you can buy and install scale screws which will make it um, a little bit more realistic i have got one purple clamp here that has a, a metal scale screw inside to show you how it is so that's um, the part about the variants when you purchase this set in my Shapeway shop, make sure you get the one you want most. So make sure you get, you check in the description that it's with or without the screws. Now I'd like to talk about the contents of this set. In this set, you will find all purple clamps that you will need in order to complete the exterior of your DeLorean. Um, well, as you see, the original parts are just a plastic um, piece. Uh, well, in, in, uh, on the real car, there's a rubber hose and the purple clamps, they don't look anything like they should. They're just like small cylinders, which are applied onto this um, plastic part. Um, the end of the hose goes into the Mol Richardson connectors. These are also not accurate. They look nothing like the rear part. So we are replacing these two. So we've got the purple, the purple clamps, the wire glands, which go onto the flux boxes. I will show them a little bit later. The Mol Richardson clamps, the base plates for the more Richardson clamps and I've also created some replacement aluminum plates for the flux boxes. These also come into versions one where you can add your own screws and um, one which will have the screws painted on top of them. With this set you also will also receive a few spares there are a few spares for the most common uh, purple clamps in this set. There are also two extra Moll Richardson connectors with their bases. And there are also three wire glands included, three extra wire glands included. Now let's go through the different parts in this set. I will start with the purple clamps. In what concerns the purple clamps, there are well, a, thing, a few things wrong. So when you look at the panel, there are um, like three holes for uh, five uh, purple clamps on, the, on this part. That's because the way they have designed uh, the part so that it only has a few pins and the other purple clamps are attached to, the, to, the, to this plastic part, which uh, should represent the hose. By the way, with the purple clamps, you will be able to use a real uh, rubber hose, which has a diameter of 2.4 millimeter. And I will add the link to the right hose in the manual. The manual will be available very soon. And I will put the link to the manual in the description of this video. So, um, for start, you need to check your panel because sometimes those holes are not properly drilled. So if you see that there are rough edges on the back side, you take a drill, which uh, drill that is a little bit smaller than the hole itself, uh, like this one, a hand drill, and you go um, around those rough edges until you have removed the, the material, the su superfluous material, inside the hole and you have got a nice clean hole so now that we have done that 
we are going to take a look at the purple clamp. So each of them has a, a pin and the pins on the model, they all have like different angles and um, they are positioned in a, diff in, a, in a different way. So what is important in this set is that you use the exact, the exact clamp on the exact spot. So that's the reason why all of them are numbered. So you will see L1, which represents the left first clamp. And then you go further with L2, L3, L4, L5 um, on the base panel you've got six and seven and on the rear panel you've got eight and nine and on the left side you've got nine purple clamps and on the right side you've got ten purple clamps there's one extra which is positioned on the pontoon side on the actually on the uh, platform so you will i will show you a picture right now Here's where the tense purple clap is on the right side. Now, because of the way the parts are printed, they um, have some residual wax uh, on the bottom side. On the bottom side, they are supported by wax. Um, they, when they, uh, after printing, they clean the, the 3D parts uh, by warming up those wax and uh, uh, wax flows away. But there is always some residual wax uh, on, on the on the bottom side of the part. So what you will have to do is um, really uh, thoroughly clean the pins of the uh, clamps with a with a knife with a hobby knife. So make sure that there is no uh, residual wax left on them because the wax will add some um, will make them a little bit th thicker and it will be a little bit di more difficult to to put them on the right spot. So you really need to carefully remove the wax once you have separated them. So um, th that's really important. And you will also have to remove the wax once you have painted the part. So you remo remove it once once you have once you detach them from uh, from this uh, part set. And the second time you will clean them again with a knife after you have painted them to make sure that they uh, properly fit. And when you do that, I would suggest that you clean them a little bit after painting to see if they fit, then test fit them until they uh, fit perfectly inside. I would suggest um, that when you have finished um, cleaning them and they all fit properly, that you don't use any glue to attach them. Uh, you can if you want, but that's not, um, well, yeah, that's not necessary if they really um, fit well inside those holes, they will stay there. So that part, um, well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not um, really that a fan of using glue on uh, such parts. And I'm really, um, yeah, I'm really convinced that once they, uh, once you put them inside, they can stay uh, without any help. So that's that. Now for the additional holes uh, that need to be made in order to attach all purple clamps, I have created a template, which is um, quite easy to use. Uh, this one uh, will be available through my Facebook group and um, a link to that will be included in the painting and assembly manual so that uh, you can always find it. Um, I will also include pictures on how to position those um, um, those templates so that you get the holes in the exact place they should be. One thing to, that is really important regarding the extra holes is that you drill perpendicular to the surface. That means uh, if the surface is curved, like here, you need to um, drill really perpendicular to the panel and not uh, la angled like uh, XO the manufacturer, manufacturer of this model did. So not um, angled, but just easy perpendicular to the surface to say so. For the new holes, they are, I hope you can see this, they are all, this is a new hole, the, the second one, or the, the hole for clip two. This one is 
perpendicular to the panel and on this side you turn the panel like this and you also make the holes perpendicular so like this so now we have a nice hole and you can attach the purple clamp so that's on the holes another suggestion about when you are making these holes is that you start with a, a small drill like a 0 0.8 millimeter and you gradually increase it until you reach 1.5 millimeters the added holes they need to be 1.5 millimeters so go slow gradually and you will have perfect holes it's really easy to make these, these holes one thing to remember uh, is that you when you are using a hand drill uh, always put a piece of foam uh, on the end so that when you are drilling and at the end you're going through the material that you don't bump with the end of the uh, hand drill onto your panel scratching it or damaging it so you don't want that so that's why we are putting this foam uh, in place for the front fenders there are two um, additional holes that need to be uh, made you can see them here this is the left side the left fender and this is the right fender so there are two additional holes needed then we go uh, to the bottom you will make um, two additional holes on the um, chassis plate make sure you've got the right template for each side because the holes are uh, a little bit different on both sides so i've been studying those really uh, thoroughly and the holes as they are positioned now are the in the exact place they should be um, well where they are on the, um, on the real car now we're going to the rear fenders and there we have um, one hole that is really uh, position very badly it's behind the flux bars so um, that hole is almost not visible once you have the flux bars and the flux bands in place and it's also not accurate um, when you take a look at the real uh, DeLorean A car so um, I've decided to include a template to create an additional hole for those which is positioned correctly as as it should and um, um, about the existing hole that one will be covered by the uh, rubber hose once you have it in place so it will not be that uh, visible at all and it's also behind the flux bar so um well it will i wouldn't uh, bother too much about uh, having that extra hole on on your panel um because it will not be that visible for the people that um uh, don't want to create any additional holes into the uh, panels I have also included uh, two purple clamps that can be inserted into the existing holes uh, those that are positioned incorrectly uh, which are the um, clamps number nine on each side left and right and uh, on the set they are um, marked as uh, XL9 um, and XR nine which means uh, extra left nine and extra left right so if you don't want to drill any uh, holes in the panels you can use those and um, you can still have the accurate uh, purple clamps in place for the rear bumper um, the lower section of the rear bumper to me more to be more precise there are two existing holes um, on that lower section which need to be enlarged to 1.5 millimeters and the, there is a new hole needed which will also be 1.5 millimeter and here is the template in order to um, to create that new hole I would suggest to start by enlarging the existing holes uh, and then to position the template and to make the new hole in the same way as the rest of the holes I've also researched the position of the new hole, uh, the one that is missing, uh, to be exactly as it is on the DeLorean A car 
and here you now see a comparison between the A car and the position on the holes after you've drilled the, the new hole. And that concludes the part on the purple clamps, but before we go on to the um, parts for the flux boxes, I would like to show you how the front fender looks when those purple clamps are in place. So I'm going to take the fender and I'm going to insert the purple clamps in place. Yeah, so once they are painted, they will be a um, um, much better fit, a much tighter fit than they are now. They're a little bit loose and that's in, um, in purpose at, the, at this moment because I want to have them um, because there will be uh, a bit of thickness added to the pins once they are painted. So uh, that will be uh, completely okay once painted. Okay, now we can remove these and we will continue with the parts for the flux boxes. Well, let's start with the, with the plates for the flux boxes. What I've um, designed are new um, aluminium plates um, where you can add some really cool stuff. So uh, for once you can uh, add some real hardware screws. Again, the um, description, uh, the, um, the ones I indicate that you could use will be mentioned in the manual. And um, what I would I would have also wanted to achieve is that um, when you have those um, stock um, plates, which come with a model, you press them inside. And once they are pressed inside, uh, you cannot take them off anymore easily. Um, I can do it now by inserting a small tooth picker on the back side and pushing them out, but you don't you cannot access the back of the flux box once it's on your model. So uh, what I wanted to do is uh, create a panel, an aluminium plate, which uh, is removable. And I'm doing this by adding a magnet on the back side. Uh, on the inside, there's a screw, a metal screw, which um, uh, is attracted by the magnet. So once you have glued the magnet on this small cylinder which I have added to the part and you put the aluminium plate in part it will just um, stay there in place and you can also uh, remove it easily should you remove the uh, flux box and why should you want to remove the flux box that's um, well let's say when you um, if you have a de defective lead uh, inside there are the the LEDs for the uh, flux bands. Uh, should you have a defective LED, you can disassemble this part um, easily and you will not have any problems uh, destroying the parts or stuff like that. You can just remove them. And I thought that was a nice uh, added touch to this, uh, to this aluminum plate. So you can make them more accurate and you can make them removable. Now, there is a part which is included in this set, which is this part. And um, I will explain how you use that part. Well, on the um, aluminum plates for the front flux boxes, there is enough space clearance that you can just, uh, that have uh, been able to add a small cylinder and you can glue the magnet on top of this small cylinder. But for the top flux boxes, there is not enough clearance. So, um, but the magnet fits, but I cannot make that uh, cylinder. So what I did is the following. I created this part and this part, you can just insert between the two pins. You push it down until it's um, fully on the bottom. Then you take um, a magnet and a little bit of uh, super glue and you put the glue 
exactly uh, inside that uh, hole. And once you have a little bit of super glue there, you place the magnet in the hole and you wait until you can push it a little bit um, uh, downwards with, with a toothpicker. And once that's in place, you can remove, simply remove the these uh, guiding parts, to say so, guiding and positioning parts, and the magnet will stay in place, as you see here. So that's um, how you add the magnets to those aluminum plates for the upper flux boxes. Now moving to the next part, which are the um, more Richardson clamps with their own bases. Um, well, this is um, a flux box, the stock flux box, and we have three holes. Uh, the hole for the wire glands you can keep and the wire gland will go uh, inside by pushing the pin in there. For those, those two additional holes that are here, we will not use. These two holes need to be uh, filled. So what I did is include a few pins be in between the wire glands. You can see them uh, here. There are enough pins. Um, and those pins you can take and push inside the inside those holes. Let me see if I can do that uh, easily. Yes. So, well, you push them down there. The uh, height of the pins should be the correct height that you have here. And once you have filled them, then you can. Um, um, sand them a little bit and make uh, the surface really uh, flush. And once you do that, you will have to create new holes for the um, replica Mole Richardson clamps, which will go there uh, by using three uh, smaller holes. Those holes um, are 1.2 millimeters, uh, and there is a template for which can be applied to the uh, top side of the flux boxes um, in order to create the right holes so that you can attach the more Richardson clamps. Now we've previously talked about the uh, about cleaning the residual wax on the pins of the purple clamps. Actually, the same goes about uh, every part that is included in this set. Uh, for the more Richardson clamps, I have uh, here I have one that I have. Uh, painted in uh, aluminium. Mm, there are two things that you need to take into consideration. Well, the first, the first of it is that uh, when cleaning this, uh, use uh, the Tamiya sponge sanding paper, which is a flexible sanding paper, and you can um, really clean clean it uh, very well. The residual wax you can clean uh, properly, and because this material will um, shape itself um, according to the shape of the 3D part and it will remove only that part of the material that is not of, of the wax that is not needed or it's redundant. So um, use this stuff and um, you will have a great result in the end. Another thing that I would like to mention is that those um, more Richardson clamps have a front side and a rear side. And I'm showing you a picture now of the uh, rear side because that one um, has the um, back side of the screws and the front side has the front side of the screws and they look a little bit different, uh, both of them. So make sure you take that into account when installing your part so that you don't install it in the wrong way. Take a good look at how it looks when in place. Lastly, there's the bonus part, which is the VIN plate. The VIN plate is also fully accurate, has the exact uh, VIN number as seen on the DeLorean A car. So once you have this in place on your dashboard, it will look great, as you can see in this picture. So this concludes the explanation video on my exterior set for the 1.8 scale DeLorean model. 
I wish you good luck with painting and installing it. I cannot wait to see the pictures of this set installed on your models. There are more parts coming up really soon. I will make new videos which will be posted in this YouTube channel and there will also be more information available through my Facebook group. So keep an eye on, on both. For now, I wish you good luck and I say bye.